Good evening and welcome to my show, Ladies First. My name is Nuala Holloway and each week on the show, I'll be chatting to a lady who has an amazing story to tell. Stories that have not been told before. This evening, I'm in the village of Las Thule in County Dublin, where I will meet my very first guest. She is an amazing lady who, along with her late husband, set up a shop in the village almost 70 years ago. I'm looking forward to meeting her. So let's go. I was born in, um, in Dublin in a place called Finn Street near the Phoenix Park. I was nine months old when I left Dublin. Oh, so a young. very sad time for my parents. I mean, you see, and when you're, when you're growing up, you forget to ask your parents things. No, I was very happy in it. I was happy in England. I met, they were lovely people. And, but, and we were just three little girls and my father was very protective about us, as you can imagine. Coming from a farm, and, um, and of course with them, it was a different world. I was going out with another fellow in England, you know, and um, he was in the RAF. And, um, oh, I, was, I got engaged, I was going to get married. I was very young, yes. I was very young. And you know, when you see things through rose-tinted glasses, oh, really, definitely. And uh, anyway, I, um, uh, what happened tragically, he got schizophrenia and um, it was all tragic. Oh, it went through a very sad period. It, there was, he, he couldn't see f any future in anything. It was just, the light, it was, everything was black, black, black. So I gave back the ring and that was it. And that was it. And I'm very sad, was going around very sad. And um, my sister said, oh, we're thinking of going off to Ireland on holiday. I said, oh, I'll go. Anyway, we went over to Ireland and because we had to call into the campus and, and he was home on leave. And I saw him again. I thought, <laughs> went in, thought, my God, thought this. Now he was six foot two and he was as straight as that. And he was really slim. You know, really granddad. See him up there, see him up there. Oh, yes. That's when, <laughs> when he was, yeah, he was in Italy there when he was 21. And he was so like, he was very positive about life. And he had a lot of humour, he, you know, which appealed to me very much. So, uh, of course, he said, oh, would you like to go for the pictures? <laughs> okay. Well, that was, a, that was a great start off. And we went to see a funny film. I can't even remember what it was called now. But that was it. That's the start of it. Okay. And from then on, that was it. We got married in 1948. He was always thinking about Ireland, you see, and uh, loved to go back. And of course, I had the love of Ireland in me. His brother, he only had one brother, and Jim, they were, they were completely different, you know, in their, in their characters. Now, Jim was really a classical scholar. He was brilliant like that. He went off one day, I think he went over to the Eagle House, and probably had a few, you see, and this fellow, was selling a little shop across the road. Oh, yes. And uh, it was like a little bargain. And Jim, in a, mad, in a moment of madness, decided to buy it because it was going for a song. And when he told his wife, she thought, you're crazy. So he went back to try to cash the cheque, but it had gone through. Anyway, so he came, he, he wasn't a businessman, that was it. But uh, see, my John had this rather gift of buying and selling, and he, he was quite good at that. And uh, um, like, not that he knew much about fish, you see, but um, he kind of, it was sort of attitude, I'll tackle anything. And gradually then John took over. Really, there, it was really in, as I say, just that little tiny place. And um, 
it was like fish and I think he had a few eggs or something, did have egg. Started off like that. And um, now, I don't know how long it took to get then the next stage, but then he decided to do, um, it was a se working seven days a week. Absolutely, I mean, you know, I didn't, we didn't have holidays, no. I was looking after all the children. I wasn't all that mad on fish, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, I, I'd be more in the office, but anyway, I was, I was, I was full time with, as you can imagine, with six. And, um, you know, I'd be very glad if I saw somebody to come in because I didn't have help. And um, when I look back, but they were good children. They were good. It was full time, absolutely full time. And um, and then, you see, John, uh, gradually, he get I he was always getting coming up with ideas. They thought, might I think it'd be an idea to do roast chickens. Then gradually, uh, he, uh, he introduced, um, I don't know whether the cheese, I think he'd started a little bit with cheese and things. And then he thought a lovely idea would be to have coffee. The smell of coffee, you wouldn't get the smell of fish. <laughs> Oh, he get, went off and got this lovely coffee machine and the and the grinding coffee and you could get a lovely smell. Exactly. So we and then the deli gradually a, a few more and a few more little things. But it was do you know what it was it was actually a slow burner. It just took years to build up. It was sheer hard work. And sometimes things would be so hard you know, that you really, you'd wonder where the next penny was coming from. Oh yeah, it was gradually, gradually. And you know, when I look at it today, you know, you just can't believe it. What a gracious lady. We've just got a glimpse into the life story of Margaret Caveston. She is also a wonderful artist, and she didn't start painting until she was 75 years old. She keeps a diary of her daily events and what's happening around the area. She's no longer involved with the business, but she keeps a very caring and watchful eye on what is happening there. Next week, I will be chatting to another lady. So until then, remember, ladies first.